Thank you very much. Um, the first panel uh, discussed how inequalities are a formidable obstacle to inclusive and sustainable development, and also um, how the efforts to address inequalities are often isolated and fragmented, which uh, end up uh, in diverting resources to symptoms rather than root causes. And my uh, co-panelists here are going to address some of the you know, many issues regarding structural uh, discriminations and those that have been uh, reinforced through the social, legal, and cultural spheres. So I'm going to touch upon just two points which are really very simple when you look at them, but they, they uh, go to the core of uh, what the common factors driving and sustaining these inequalities are. And uh, Rosa had touched upon uh, the, the first point a little bit, and I'd like to elaborate. And that is uh, one of the most challenging inequalities is that uh, of the disparities of opportunities and capacity for um, individuals to act as protagonists in the process of global development. And uh, just and broad-based development must ultimately rest on the uniquely human endowment of individuals and communities for becoming agents of positive change and positive social change in their communities, especially women and minorities and other vulnerable groups, indigenous people, as Mirna has pointed out uh, earlier. Uh, the report asks the central question of what should be equalized, and this is really at the core of the issue. Because until we can clarify the nature of the problem, we won't be able to take coordinated steps to address it. And at a fundamental level, I think we all know that we are equal, or at least we are told by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. However, once we enter society, the differences present themselves in many forms, structural, cultural, economic. And these determine the range of opportunities uh, for the individual to develop and thrive, opportunities which quickly compound or lack thereof, which blocks development. We need to think carefully about what equal opportunity really looks like. And for an example, because two children may have the same opportunity to attend school, it doesn't imply that they have the same opportunity to learn, to be safe, to be fairly evaluated and to thrive, particularly if one of the children is a girl or a member of an ethnic or religious minority or another disadvantaged group. So it's uh, the responsibility of governments to provide for the means and measures by which opportunities can be extended to all members of society. Change also needs to take place, and this is uh, one that cuts uh, particularly uh, goes to the second question that's been posed to us. Change needs to take place at the level of attitudes in our mindsets and the very way in which we view and interpret our own social reality. This dimension of inequality at the level of thought and attitude needs to be of uh, special concern because until prejudicial and harmful stereotyped attitudes towards individuals and communities are addressed and transformed, discrimination will continue to manifest in the structures and institutions of society no matter how grand the policies uh, that are formulated. And uh, these attitudes become entrenched in the culture of the communities. So it's, it's, it's at the level of the individual, of course, and we understand that. And at the level of the institutions, we also understand that. And those of us working in the human rights uh, area know very well. But it's uh, an often forgotten uh, protagonist in development is that, uh, the role of the community. And it's, it's at that level that these, uh, the culture of uh, prejudice uh, becomes rooted. Uh, thank you. The distinctions by which uh, we define who we are 
based on gender, race, age, social economic status, religion, location, etc., ha have become uh, the basis for this uh, discrimination, creating the concepts of the us and the them. And uh, therefore, we have to uh, tackle this at a very fundamental level. Um, I'm going to just end by saying that the injustices evident in the current global framework will require much more than skillful methodologies and technocratic solutions. Because it's not only, um, it's only as all members of the human family are invited to make their contribution to the betterment of society, and only as the distribution and use of resources are arranged in a way that permits each to do so, will progress against the old age. Uh, the age-old specter of inequality and inequity be possible. Um, I had some other points, but I know we are short of time, so we'll continue. Thank you very much, Bani.